And it says, and so they said to him, please inquire of God that we may know whether the journey on which we go will be prosperous. How do you see that? We want to know if the journey that we're going on is going to be a prosperous one. Verse 6, and the priest said to them, go in peace. That word peace is the original language in the Hebrew is the word for prosperity. The presence of the Lord will be with you on your way. How do you say, Lord, thank you. You're going to be with me. You remember uh, Moses uh, was debating, talking with God about leading the Israelites and then having to go to Pharaoh. And Moses said something. He said, God, uh, if you don't go with me, I'm not going. How many of you know there's a guaranteed promise to those who will obey God's word, there's a promise that your journey will be a prosperous journey and God will go with you. It's important that we get this because like I say, if you go to the mall tomorrow, you have no clue if somebody would decide or if you go to the Olympics, you have no one uh, to assure you that some crazy black widow, that's what they call them, <clears throat> is there to do you or anyone harm. But we get up and we just run out, you know. We're going busy. We're going to do our day, man. We just got to go to work. We got to be there. Stop. 30 minutes could change your life. 30 minutes could put a hedge about you. 30 minutes could put a shield around you. 30 minutes could cause you to take a right turn instead of the left turn. It means God wants you to be totally enveloped in a successful journey of life. Not just to the mall. Make it bigger. Your whole life should be that journey. How many of you want God protecting you when you're not going to the wall? Yeah. How many of you want God to be there every day? Not just when you run into a little bit of a jam. Come on, do you hear me? And he said, make a request, if by any means, Paul was talking about prayer here, by the way. Uh, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God and come unto you. Now, the prosperous journey, he connected it to the will of God. If you're not in the will of God, you can't guarantee a prosperous journey. You see, that road can be a prosperous road or it can be a rough road. It can be like the ice cream rocky road. It can be a bad day. Come on, are you listening to me? Psalm 35 verse 27. Let them shout for joy. Can you shout for joy this morning? Let them shout for joy and be glad. Now, the two re references are really important. One is a shout for joy, but glad is a condition of your attitude. <clears throat> you can shout for joy and then look like a sourpuss later. Gladness is of the heart. It's a condition. I'm glad and occasionally I shout for joy. <clears throat> and he said, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Amen. Look, saints, you could title the message today, What Brings God Pleasure? What brings your Father in heaven pleasure is this fact that he can prosper your way. There's no greater desire in a parent's heart than for them to see their children successful. Come on. It's no greater joy when you see your children to see them prospering in health, prospering in soul, prospering in job, prospering in career. There's nothing like it. You, you just are overwhelmed with a joy when you see those children prospering. I'm sitting in my room and God says this. How many times does, and I'm putting it to you because he said he used his own personal tense. 
How many times does God have to prove to you that he loves you? I heard God say that. If Amy was in church, I'd get her to testify. She said yesterday that she had God speak to her that she was, she was said, the Lord said something about, I'm going to, I'm your provider. And she went home and there was a check there for, in the mail, Mike was reading it, from the mortgage company that brought them back some money that the, insu- uh, the mortgage company owed them and they gave them money back. So as soon as she went home, the prayer was answered. Darlene told me that as soon as she talked to her husband, that prayer got answered that she had prayed yesterday. How many know God is a God that wants to answer our prayers? But saints, there is a prerequisite of some things that must get in order for God to do that. God will not violate his principles just because he loves you. How many hear that? And we need to get this today that God is trying to help us to understand the the value of the stories of answered prayer and what God will do if we let him do this. How many of you know at some point, saints, you got to start believing that God loves you. At some point, it moves over from to unbelief. At some point, you stop moving in the positive realm of the Spirit of God. You're over in doubt and unbelief because you're always wanting God to prove himself again to you. If God don't ever do another thing for me, he don't have to do anything for me. When I laid in a hospital with my left eye had been knocked out of my head, my retina knocked off, and all the mess went down, the green in my eye leaked on my cheek. God came in my room, and I said to the Lord, God, uh, I, was, uh, I was blind when I had eyes because I had just gotten saved. I was a sinner, and I said, Lord, if you don't ever heal my eyes, if I'm blind the rest of my life, I'm going to serve you as a blind man. And God healed me. Are you hearing me today? What does God have to do? Why does God have to caress you and woo you and massage you day and day and day and day while you backslide, while you go opposite of his word, while you disobey him? Why does God have to keep reminding you, I love you? John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 1 John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. Look, saints, everything we do, everything, everything about this Bible, everything about our lives is hung, the Bible says, is hung on the law of God's love. I'll read it to you. Everything in your Christian life is hung on God's love. God so loved, God so loved, God so loved, God so loved that he gave his son. And we love him because he loved us. Matthew 22 and verse 37. This is so that you'll know what I just said is Bible. I'm just talking the Bible today. I'm just talking the Bible. Matthew 22 and verse 37. And it says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the first great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbors yourself. Verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets and the prophets. Saints, everything, everything that God's ever said is hung on the law of God's love. God so loved that he gave. It's not enough to know about the love of God. We have to choose to develop the character of his love. Now, come with me a little bit because we've been shouting. I set you up. I gave you joy, which is Novocaine (laughs) or penicillin so that I can now do a little surgery. So just roll over and say, go ahead, go ahead, cut it out. 
Just cut it right out. I don't need it anyway. Immature Christians never get the fullness of what they have a right to as heirs of God. Immature Christians. Galatians 3.29, it says, If you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Though he is master of all, under is under, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we are children, we are in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent his, forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Therefore, you are no longer a slave or a child, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Here's our problem and the reason that we're not walking that prosperous journey and many times we're walking alone is because we are immature. We're like children. Now, we have to understand and think, and we have to speak love in order to be considered a real mature Christian. In other words, there's got to be some manifestations in your life that give evidence that you are maturing, you're growing up. How many of you know when a child is, is around you, there's got to be some evidence that they're growing up before you give them the keys to the car? I don't know about you, but at least for me. And then there ain't no guarantee. You have to understand 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Remember, when you are immature in the love of God, you think as a child and you speak as a child. You say, well, what does this have to do with my prosperous journey? Because in your prosperous journey, God's not going with you till you grow up. God is not going to put financial wealth supernatural power and increase into the life of a selfish child. Hello. When you're a selfish, self-centered child, God's not going to bless you and prosper you. Hello. When you want everything for selfie, you want everything for yourself, God's not going to bless that. Have you heard that? How many of you know if you give your child money and they blow it, you're not liable to give them money again until they learn to be responsible? Isn't that true? If God were to give you all the things you desire before you have matured in the area of love, think about it, it would have destroyed you. Huh? Lord, give me that position. Move me, put me with that woman. Maybe that man. God, you know. And we start telling God what we want. He just looks and goes, I'm not doing that for you. He sees the beginning from the end. He knows that if he gave you what you ask, it would destroy you. Pride will come and then the fall. And that fall ain't talking about winter, summer, and spring. I'm talking about falling down. And we say, Lord, hold back from me till I grow up. A mature Christian does not hesitate to give what is precious to him or to her because they know the love of God and they love God. Many people, saints, and I'm going to bring it down. Now, you got to hear this part. This is the whole point of making all this. Many people love and believe God but few trust him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Who's directing your path? God or you? But it's time to decide that you want to get on the highway, the journey of the favor of God and begin to prosper in all your ways. For it is the Father's good pleasure to 
prosper you.